Lord, whatever the weather is in our lives, be it stormy or calm, may we be for this hour put aside and bask in the sunshine of your love. Amen. Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. We want to thank God this morning for allowing us and giving us also this opportunity of sharing the word of God through social media. I hope you give just part of your time to listen to the word of God. As I often say, the word of God, when you listen to it, it will change your life. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you are ever present with us. We come together as your sons and daughters to be still in your presence. We come to worship you because we know that you love us and you take delight in our company. There are times when we are so caught up in our constant business that we are reluctant to find times of quietness with you. In the hustle and bustle of life, we do not find time to simply be with our families and friends who enjoy their company. Speak to us now, Lord. Quieten our minds. Relax our bodies as we sense your presence among us. May we listen to your voice that speaks us inwardly. Thank you, Father, that we are here because of you. Bless us this morning, Lord, with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll call my brother Ben to come and share the word of God, read the word of God from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Okay, brother. Thanks, Johnson, and uh, good to be here with all you guys today, reading the word again. Um, as Johnson mentioned, Mark 4, 35 to 41. And it's about Jesus calming the storm. I'm sure we all need a bit of that in, in our lives once in a while. Anyway, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And this is the word of the Lord in this week's mess, uh, scripture. So, yeah, we'll wait and see what Johnson's got to tell us about this one. It's going to be a good one. Thanks, Johnson. I am good. Be still and know that I am good. Okay. Uh, today our theme is What storms are you facing? What storms are you facing? Jesus had spent a long day beside the Sea of Galilee teaching multitudes of people about the kingdom of God. Even was coming on, so Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. So they climbed into a boat and started to cross the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was tired and fell asleep on a cushion in the stern of the boat. Suddenly, a furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that the boat was nearly swamped. We are told that such storms are very common in the Sea of Galilee. The sea is more than 600 feet below sea level. It is a relatively small body of water 
10 miles long and 4 miles wide. However, it is about 150 feet deep. Because the sea is so far below sea level and surrounded by mountains, students of the subject say it is particularly susceptible to sudden storms. Winds sweeping across the land come up and over the mountains, creating downdrafts over the water. Combined with thunderstorms that appear sudden over the surrounding mountains, the water can steer into violent 20-feet waves. The sea can become one minute and violent the next. So it is not surprising that the wind and the waves threatened to swamp the little boat occupied by Jesus and his disciples. So the fishing boats used by the Galilean fishermen at that time had low size so that the men could cast and draw in their fishing nets. Such a boat could have been easily tossed about and given the right circumstances, completely capsized by the wind and waves. So to make matters worse, these storms usually do not happen at night. But on this very day, it happened tonight. That probably added to the discomfort felt by the disciples. Everything appears a little scarier than suns, they said. Remember that some of the disciples were seasoned fishermen, accustomed to life on the sea. So you can appreciate the voraciousness of the storm. The disciples thought they might die. They were so frightened, they woke Jesus. We had somehow money to sleep through it all. Also panic-stricken, they asked him, Teacher, do you not care if we perish? Do you not care if we perish? Many of us have asked this same question at some time in our lives. A sudden storm arises in our life, a health or a family crisis, the loss of imagining the job, or whatever that storm might be, and Jesus seems to be asleep. And we want to ask do you not care that we perish? Of course he cares. But something, sometimes he may seem to be sleeping. Everyone sooner or later goes through a storm. It is especially true in today's world. Depression and despair are at epidemic proportions in our society. A lot of young people kill themselves each day in overt of acts of suicide. Other attempts to make their own lives take their own lives. Countless thousands more are killing themselves so slowly by less obvious means such as overeating, hunger strike, alcohol, drug abuse, name it. These are all storms in life that are encountering our young people. People have had the same reaction for centuries in facing the storms that buffet their lives. A young mother dies and leaves a brave husband and two small children, and people wonder if the Lord is sleeping through it all. What has happened? Where is God in all this when all these things are happening? A little child is hit by a car and crippled for life, and the family wonders if perhaps God might have been taking a nap at that time. A home is broken by a painful separation and divorce, and the wonder comes as to whether the Lord cares at all. Death of a spouse ranks the most stressful life event in the inventory, with divorce and marital separation from men as the second and third most stressful life events in anyone can face. A healthy marriage is vitally important to most people, sense of identity, security, and well-being. When a marriage, a marriage falls apart, the partners can go through the same stages of grief as someone whose spouse has died. If you can imagine some, some of those things. Most marriages face a storm of some kind or over the years. Some marriages don't make it through the storm and the wreckage can be devastating, especially for women. A recent study shows that women and children experience 73% decline in their standard of living the year of their divorce. Ironically, many standard of living increased to 42%. We all have failed it. Everyone in your life but feels it now. And all eyes have gone back to that figure sleeping on the cushion. Where is Jesus? Sudden, almost with one voice, you begin to yell back to Jesus. Teacher, wake up, teacher. Look what's happening here. Teacher, we are going to die. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care if we perish? We are all asking that same question. The worst part is that Jesus seems to be asleep. Why doesn't he intervene? 
We cry out in our distress. Where is God in my distress? Do you not care that we perish? Where is God when things are happening the way we don't expect? So it is with people. Our greatest danger is not the external condition that makes our, our environment, but the storms that sometimes rage within us. We can live in the biggest, most magic house imaginable. We can live in the nicest, safe neighborhood, gated underground utilities, beautiful landscape. But if there is a tempest rolling around on the inside of our lives, we can be in mortal danger. It's all, we all forget about all these things that we see around us. The beautifulness, all is gone. Christ is still in the business of stealing storms. We need to understand that sometimes those storms are in our individual hearts. Sometimes those storms are in our, in our families. Sometimes those storms are in our community, our society. But still, Christ is still in the business of stealing storms. He's still in there. Wherever there are people, there are storms. You would agree with that, wouldn't you? You would agree that wherever there are people, there are storms. Wherever there are people, there are storms. These storms may be personal storms. These storms rage in our individual hearts and minds. Or they may be storms in our social relationships. Either way, they can become really dangerous, real peril. A storm with one's own soul can have a tragic circumstances. You can have jealous, an ending jealous in your life. You can't see anything good even from your neighborhood. Anything good from your neighbor. Anything good from your children as neighbors. You are always angry about life, bitterness, guilt. The list of storms that can rock our individual souls is length indeed. We need a savior when such storms rage within us. We need Jesus Christ. On your own you can't do it. But there are other storms, storms that may rock our relationship. Those storms may be in our marriages or between us and our children or in our workplace or in our community or in the world as we live it. You have got a lousy prognosis from the doctor. Your spouse has been told that he or she wants a divorce. You get laid off. One of your children is mortally ill. Quite naturally, you fall on your knees. Before God, as you have done many times before, but this time the silence is deafening. You are praying to God to intervene and things are not happening. You pray and you pray more. Tears running down your face, the storm's loose. It's banging inside your chest. And nothing happens when you ask for divine help. You think to yourself, where is God when I need him? Where is God when I need him? So the story in Mark's gospel is an affirmation. Yes, Jesus does care. When the storms of life are raging, he does care. When it seems you cannot hold on a moment longer, he does care. When the water is threatened to engulf, he does care. He is there, he does care. So I want him to believe in a God who cares. That's the question we all wrestle with sometime in our lives. I want to believe in a God who is all powerful. Who cannot let all these things happen. If God does care for us, why does he let the storms happen? I believe we can see the answer in today's lesson. There is a storm, story about Dr. Albert Schweizer, the internationally owned medical missionary in Africa during the last century. Dr. Schweizer had been in Africa for 40 years. He had worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he was totally exhausted. One day, he was sleeping on the porch and a person came to him and said, I'm sick. Wake up, Dr. Switzer. Then, the would-be patient added, don't you care? Dr. Switzer had spent his whole life caring for people, day, night, for 40 years, and the patient cried out to him when he was taking a nap, don't you care? And he thinks about it. All of us look back over our lives and see a series of answered prayers. But all of that is forgotten when we encounter a truly horrible situation. Right now I can give testimonies, a lot of testimonies of answered prayers, where God had intervened in my life. But when something bad, sinister came, sometimes we forget what it is. Do you not care that we perish? 
Do my griefs and heartaches not matter? Is there anyone who sees and understands? Teachers, do you not care what that we perish? As the frightened disciples. Every believer goes through a time like that sooner or later. The brilliant Christian author C.S. Lewis had been married only four years when his wife, Joy, died of cancer. So the couple was very much in love and Joy's death was almost too much for C.S. Lewis. He plunged into deep depression and did the only thing he knew to do. He wrote, during that time he filled up several journals which were later compiled and published under the title, A Grief Observed. So with the untimely death of his wife, C.S. Lewis, unwavering faith, was into question. It seemed to him as though God had been wonderful present in his lifetime until this catastrophe struck. Soon after John's death, C.S. Lewis wrote these words, Where is God? Where is God? When you are happy, so that you have no sense of needing him, so that you are tempted to feel his claims upon you as interruption. If you remember yourself and turn to him with gratitude and praise, you will be or so it feels welcome with open arms. But to go to him when you need, your need is in desperate. When all other help is vain, what do you find? Where is God? A door slammed in your face and a sound of bolting and double bolting inside. After that silence, you may as well turn away. The longer you wait, the more emphatic the silence will become. What can this mean? Why is God so present, a commander in our time of prosperity? So very absent in a times of trouble. When things are happening well, we are happy. We are rejoicing. On weddings, we are rejoicing. We are celebrating. On birthdays, we are celebrating. We are saying, God is good. Why is God when all these things, the bad things, start happening in your life? That's a question every generation of Christians has asked. It. Martin Luther, the founder of the Reformation, was known to have fits of depression. Nothing would help even when he was able to translate the Bible into German. Listen to his words. For more than a week, I was close to the gates of death and hell. I trembled in all my members. Christ was wholly lost. I was shaken by desperation and blaspheme of God. If two of the most notable believers of our faith can go through such times, what does it say about you and me? All of us go through storms. At such times, it seems as God is asleep. God is not there. And I, I, I avoid a move where people even come up with a theme, God is not dead. Because there are some people who believe that maybe God is dead. He's not dead. When a heartbreak or an accident or an illness or a death comes, let this be our question. Heavenly Father, what use can you make of my hard times? If we share our hard times with him in faith, he will make something useful and creative out of every tragedy that darkens our lives. And now, as a world, and now as a world, we are dealing with COVID-19 virus and the uncertain nature it has brought to our everyday lives. Recognize it only is a matter of time. Haven't we all asked this question at one time or another, in one form or another? Most of us know that God did not cause that tragedy. The Bible says clearly that God does not willingly inflict or grieve the children of men. Lamentation 3 verse 33. So the greater problem for most believers is this. Why does God allow such awful things to happen? That's where the question is. John Wesley the spiritual father of Methodist said on his deathbed, the best is God with us. So the biblical word for that is Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. How our problems and inadequacies seem to fade in the light of that staggering truth. God with us is the end obstacle in this world that we cannot surmount if that be true. God is in control. But listen to the wonderful words of the psalmist. He watches over you, he will not slumber. Indeed, he watches over Israel, will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you, your life. <coughs> the Lord will watch over your coming and your going, now and forevermore. The story in Mark's Gospel. 
The story in Mark's gospel is an affirmation, yes, Jesus does care. When the storms of life are raging, he does care. When it seems you cannot hold on a moment longer, he does care. When the waters threaten to engulf you, he does care. So the disciples rose from his sleep and he does what only the master can do. He speaks to the wind and the waves and says, peace, be still. And the wind ceases. And there is great calm. Then he turns to the disciples and asks, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? If you know faith, so the central question in life is not how many storms we encounter. The question is whether we have faith for the storms. All of us will encounter storms. Sometimes it will seem as if God has forsaken us. It is such times that our faith will be critical. Choose to trust God with his storm. Do you believe in God who loves you and has promised never to forsake you? Do you believe that however dark the clouds may be, behind the clouds the sun still shines? Do you believe that beyond every cross there is an empty tomb? If you do, you can weather the storm. However severe it may be, if you do not, today is the day to appropriate that faith for yourself, to put your faith in God. All Christians can count storms. Christ can count storms. Storms within our hearts, storms in our homes, storms within our community and world. This is so important to know. Don't panic, brothers and sisters. We can see the sleeping Jesus as a symbol of his presence within us at all times. Even when things are tough, we can be at peace because we are not alone. He's sleeping beside us. He's sleeping beside you. We need to have Christ calm the storms in our individual lives before they destroy us. We need him to calm the storms in our families and other precious relations before such relations are permanently damaged. If there's a storm going on in your life, don't you give it to Christ today and surrender to Christ. He's the only one who can deal with the storms. He's the only person I know who can deal with the storms. May the good Lord bless you as you continue to listen to this message, as you continue to think upon this message, the message about the storms, what's going on in your own life, the storms that are going on, the storms you are facing, these are challenges you are facing every day. God help you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We come to you praying knowing that you are God and nothing is impossible with you. As we come to you with all the storms that we are facing in this world, help us, Father. You are God, the maker of all. We praise you for the wonders of your creation, for heaven, sea, and sky, for all that lives and breathes. God, calm of the storm. We praise you for your living word in Jesus, picking above the rage of the waters, calming our fears with peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. God, renew our for lives. We praise you for working within us, bringing us challenges and hardships and reviving our hope within us. For the living presence of your spirit within us, we praise you. Amen. Amen. Okay, I will take um, this time so that you can take your offerings and just want to say thank you, God, with your offerings. I know you can do it. I know you can... You can think over the things that God has done to you. There are a lot of things that God has done to you throughout the week. Not only by listening to this word, but a lot of things happened in your life. And you want just to say, thank you, Lord, for these things which has happened. So let us pray and thank God. Heavenly Father, we bring our offerings before you. We thank you for everything. We thank you that you are God. We thank you for the love you have. May you bless these offerings which have been brought by your children before you. Bless them, Father, and continue to help them so that they know that God is always there. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.